like butter in your beer? No, who likes butter and beer? It's awful. All right, this is gonna be a little quickie today. I'm gonna go over how I perform a diastole test and I'll explain, Michael just kicked on. I'll explain why. Okay. Oh, that's fun. That was filming. First, you have to take a sample. So this is the tank right here that has the beer that we need to perform a diastole test on. This happens to be a batch of 12 degree pale lager. First step is sanitizing our sample port and I'm going to collect a decent amount of beer. So usually I'll perform this step when I'm taking a gravity reading, which is exactly what I did before I decided to film this. Turn off my sample port, spray it out with sanitizer, make sure that it's all good and rinsed. This is a sample of the pretty much finished fermentation of the 12 degree pale lager. Give it a smell. It's smelling really great. We'll take this sample. Generally at this step in the process, I will take a gravity reading, confirming that I'm at my final gravity. Spoiler alert, it's done fermenting. Uh, it finished off at 1.012, which is right around where I want this beer to finish. I am going to now perform the diacetyl test. So let's talk about what that means. Diacetyl is a compound that smells and tastes like butter, specifically like the butter you would find on butter popcorn at the movie theaters. Okay, so diacetyl tastes and smells like butter. What does that mean for brewers? Well, yeast produce compounds that are the precursor to diacetyl, specifically um, acetolactate that then oxidizes into diacetyl. So it's a very undesirable flavor in beer. While it is acceptable in very small amounts in certain beer styles, actually Czech lagers are one of the, the styles that is moderately appropriate in. I hate it, can't stand it. So I always wanna make sure that we don't have any diacetyl remaining in the beer. It is produced by every yeast fermentation. So we need to test it at the end of fermentation. Uh, what happens is yeast will produce it. It'll peak during the um, kind of like the halfway through fermentation. And then the yeast will reabsorb and break down the diacetyl compound and make it not noticeable or at least break it down to levels that are not perceivably noticeable to the human palate. So I am going to perform the diacetyl test and that is basically heating this sample up to a specific temperature and letting it sit there so that that precursor can oxidize and then we can do a sensory on it and make sure that it's no longer in the, uh, in the beer. I'm going to heat this sample up. The goal here is to get it to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I usually shoot for a little bit higher than that because the way that I do it, I don't have any means to hold it at a specific temperature. So I'm going to hold it, or I'm gonna bring it up to about 150, 160, and then I'm gonna let it sit in a styrofoam container so that it's as insulated as possible, and then let it sit there for at least 15 minutes, and hopefully it will, um, yeah, it'll express all of the diacetyl that's in there. It's getting close. It's right about 150 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in here. Burn the hairs on my hand, put a little tin ball, and I will put it inside of another styrofoam container. Keep it nice and insulated. Killer. Okay. So, we've got the sample here. Um, it's been heating up forcing that diacetyl to form and oxidize for the last 15 minutes. I have a sample of it here. Now that I've cooled down, you wanna make sure that you're smelling a sample that's kind of at room temperature or colder. Traditionally, you'll have these kind of side by side with a control sample from just the beer from the fermentation vessel that's not been diacetyl tested. And then you'll kind of do sensory side by side, but I've been doing this for so many years, I feel very comfortable doing it without that. So. First, we will do a uh, aromatic sensory. Yeah, right off the bat, I get a little bit. And give it a taste. Don't really get anything on the mouth, but I definitely smell just a tiny bit. So this is like probably 99%, 90 to 99% done uh, converting that diacetyl, but I'm gonna let it go for a couple more days just to be safe. So I'll let that tank set at 60 degrees, which is my diacetyl rest temperature and then I will crash it once I do a final diacetyl test. Fermentation's done, it's not, the gravity isn't dropping any longer. 
And so I just need to check for diastole, make sure that I don't have it showing up in the sample so that when I crash it, I feel super confident and I won't have diastole creep up two months down the road when the beer's ready to drink. So that's pretty much it on the diastole front. That's how you perform a forced diastole test in a tiny brewery where you don't have any lab equipment. So cheers. Boom.